Between Central Asia and South Asia, there is a country with large mountains. This place has struggled to achieve political stability for many years and has been considered by various authorities as the world's most dangerous region. So much so that not too long ago, in 2021, the country's administrative center collapsed and the state's institutions were seized by the Taliban. In fact, those closely following the agenda in August 2021 will vividly remember those trying to board moving planes to escape from the Taliban. You are well aware of where this is. It's Afghanistan and in this video, we will try to get to know Afghanistan under Taliban rule and understand life there. Today, Afghanistan is an immensely vast country with an area of 652,000 square kilometers. It is shown as the world's 41st largest country with a land area larger than developed European states like France. However, according to pre-Taliban population counts, as of 2021, the country had a registered population of 40.1 million. The country is precisely bordered by many states on the world map, including Iran to the west, Pakistan to the south, and Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan to the north. The capital of the country is Kabul, located in the middle and slightly to the east on the map. Those who have visited Afghanistan by plane from yesterday to today enter through the capital Kabul and begin to get acquainted with Afghanistan through this city. Additionally, due to the vast and mountainous terrain of Afghanistan, it is quite difficult and troublesome to travel to the country's other extremities by car. Moreover, because of the abundance of these mountainous terrains, efficient agriculture cannot be carried out in the country and there are difficulties in finding clean water sources. Although Afghanistan is located between Central Asia and South Asia, the life views, lifestyles, traditions, ethnic structures of the people there resemble the Middle East more. For example, the 40 million people living in the country are extremely devout, striving to apply the principles of Islam. People lead a conservative life, and those who have a say in the family are the men who are the patriarchal figures in the household. The daily routine of life is controlled by men. Additionally, communication and ties between relatives are quite tight. Pashtuns, Tajiks, Uzbeks and Arabs have been living together in the country for many years, and Dari and Pashto are the official languages of the country. After the Taliban, people continue to maintain a similar life tradition and there is no talk of any cultural revolution. Although there have been direct restrictions on women, radical changes affecting men's way of life are not visibly significant at the moment. The country's flag was changed after the Taliban, replacing the green-red-black flag of Afghanistan with this white Taliban flag. The writing on the flag's white background reads, There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. Similarly, Taliban soldiers patrolling the city wear their flags as bandanas on their heads, seeing themselves as the military of Islam. Taliban-led Afghanistan sees themselves as liberators in the eyes of the people. Their statement goes like this. We were living under the dominance of the United States and we were not free. The Taliban, the true owners of Afghanistan, were trapped in the mountains. Now the American net over our heads has been severed and we have found peace. They define the year 2021 as the conquest of Kabul and see it as a success story leading to freedom after 20 years. For the past 20 years, the United States maintained a military presence in Afghanistan. Then they withdrew from Afghanistan and the Taliban regained control of the country. Currently, the buildings of the United States military bases are completely empty and around them walls are inscribed with words written by the Taliban. The walls specifically say, with the help of Allah, the Taliban defeated America. Due to the rugged high mountains of Afghanistan, the US failed to eliminate the Taliban. Even during the Soviet Union era, the Soviet Union waged war in Afghanistan for nine years and more than two million Afghan citizens lost their lives defending their country. However, despite significant losses due to the Afghan advantage in terrain, the country could not be occupied and the Soviet Union had to sign a peace agreement. However, today, a superpower country like the United States can, if it wishes, defeat the Taliban in one day with the military force at its disposal. Therefore, the Taliban are only fooling themselves and thinking they have defeated the United States. They only exist if the United States wants them to. 
otherwise they can never pose a danger. In fact, everyone you talk to in Afghanistan claims that, thanks to their petroleum reserves and strong collaborations, their country will become stronger and they are confident in a bright future. Additionally, they want to prove to other countries that they are peace-loving and are pursuing good relations. However, it is worth noting that almost no country officially recognizes the Taliban. In terms of diplomatic relations, they are only recognized by Pakistan, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. They have no official relations with the rest of the world and no one approves of it. In the markets and bazaars, people are hopeful for their country and continue their businesses. From the bakery to the butcher, everyone has positive thoughts about Afghanistan. However, it is undeniable that they are currently living in isolation from the world. Even though people's faces may be smiling, there is a pain and fatigue in their eyes. Afghan cuisine has developed with a focus on meat. Since agriculture is not favorable in the country, a meat centric food culture has emerged. Therefore, it is not easy for someone who does not like meat to live in Afghanistan. In the restaurants you will visit in the markets, you will always see meat dishes being prepared. For example, they have a dish where all the chickens are put on large skewers and then they cook it over hot sand. Or they have kebabs where thick pieces of meat are put on skewers and the Afghan people absolutely love these two dishes. Their kebab logic is different from other kebabs. It is made on bone in meat, not boneless meat. Just like the Uzbeks, they are meat enthusiasts and eat at least two meat-focused meals a day. In their meat dishes, they claim to use more than 22 different spices. They not only consume poultry like chickens, but also frequently indulge in the meat of birds known as quail. In fact, there are individuals selling live birds in various parts of the capital. The tradition of bird meat consumption is not only prevalent in Afghanistan, but also extensively embraced within the Arab world. Middle Easterners hold a warm regard for almost every type of meat. The demand for these bird markets in Afghanistan must be substantial, as a significant number of people have entered this sector. Various birds sold in cages can be perceived as a delightful meat experience catering to the local palate. Some buy these birds to nurture and raise but most acquire them directly for consumption. The logic of bread in the country is not the standard loaf, but rather lavash bread, unique to the region. In fact, this bread has a special name. They call it bolani. These bolani bread can be filled with potatoes, leeks, and meat as desired. They bake the bread in a pit fire and sell it while still hot. These bakeries usually employ four or five people, providing service to people from early morning until sunset. The taste of the bread is reminiscent of the Samsa pastry in Uzbekistan. After all, they also filled their samsas with various garnishes. Moreover, when wandering through Afghanistan's bazaars, you'll undoubtedly come across various weapon shops. These weapon shops showcase and sell weapons, as well as provide weapon repairs. The market inside the bazaar is named Mujahid Market, and here you can find all the ammunition needed for entering into warfare from bombs to heavy machine guns. Not only weapons, but you can also find Taliban's official operation camouflage within this market and purchase it. By the way, you'll almost always see bearded men when you meet any man in Afghanistan. While the younger generation aged 18 between 30 keeps their beards short, older individuals sport fuller and thicker beards. Therefore, finding a beardless man in Afghanistan is almost impossible. Additionally, it is equally rare to see women in the bazaar market. You can also purchase decals of Taliban leaders from the market. In the center of Kabul, people set up electronic stalls, creating a crowded market. From these markets, you can buy mostly outdated phones. Due to the absence of taxation and regulations for opening and running shops in the country, shopkeepers conduct their businesses in the middle of the street. This includes barbers who perform hair and beard trims in the middle of the street. There is even one photographer in the country claiming to possess the oldest camera in the region. Visitors to the country invariably visit this photographer and get their pictures taken with his camera. This man, who chose not to leave his country after the Taliban era, continues his work. He claims to be 80 years old and says he has been practicing this profession with love for more than 60 years in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, along with notable individuals you can encounter, there are also many parks and mausoleums to explore. 
For instance, the tomb of Baba, the king of Kabul, is situated in Afghanistan and is actually listed on the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Moreover, Kabul is known as the city of parks as there are many green spaces to explore in the city, which is a positive detail in terms of urban planning. Most vehicles in traffic in the capital. Kabul do not have license plates yet and there hasn't been any regulation on this matter. However, if you park your car in the middle of the bazaar, there are penalties like whip lashes that directly endanger human life. This is because after the Taliban, civil law statutes have been completely set aside and they enforce their own laws. At the highest points of Kabul, you can find equipment used in the war with the Soviets. When observing Kabul from these high points, you can also see that the buildings in the capital are generally poor. The country is in serious need of development and the atmosphere in the capital feels at least 20 years behind the modern era. There is a shopping mall in Kabul, but you cannot shop or withdraw money there with internationally valid cards like your MasterCard or Visa. This is because, as mentioned, the Taliban has no international agreements with the rest of the world, and therefore you cannot handle any international affairs there. One of the first acts of the Taliban in the country was to halt the production of poppy. Before the Taliban, it was free to cultivate opium poppies in poppy fields openly grown by people. Due to the harvested poppy production, people were turning to drug use and in the secluded areas of Kabul, people were trading in this business. Afghanistan was, figuratively speaking, one of the largest herb producers in Central Asia and the world before the Taliban. After the Taliban, substance use in the country has dropped to zero. People can no longer freely use even regular tobacco there. Today, if you want to be more than just a civilian and become a member of the Taliban, you must attend Taliban schools and graduate from them. If you successfully pass the required training, you earn the right to become a Taliban member. If you are a woman in the country, life can be much more challenging for you. If you aspire to a life similar to Western countries and expect corresponding rights, Afghanistan will not satisfy you. Even young women are forbidden from going to school in Afghanistan. Only primary school education is allowed. Afghan women are obligated to wear a headscarf in public and the clothing approved by the Taliban is focused on the burqa. Women who do not wear headscarves can be arrested for disrupting the balances of society, according to the Taliban. It would be impossible not to mention Afghanistan's national sport called Buzkashi. This game essentially originates from a Central Asian tradition. Various players ride horses and try to place a goat carcass in a circle designated as a reference point. The person who successfully places it wins the game. Similar games are known by different names in Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. Not only the players, but also the spectators enjoy watching the game immensely. While the game can be likened to football in terms of competition, it harbors life-threatening risks to an extent that is incomparable to football. Jockeys riding horses during the game can fall off and get injured, break their bones and even die afterward. In conclusion, whether Afghanistan remains under Taliban rule or not, there is a long road to progress. While it may be intriguing to explore local flavors, Afghan culture, people, mausoleums, or the city's functioning, it does not promise a secure life for a lasting stay. Especially if you are an individual born and raised in Western culture, you might not even want to come to Afghanistan, not even for a visit. You are always on edge in the country and you cannot foresee what might happen to you in the next minute. If you want more content related to Afghanistan, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel for free. See you in the new video. Goodbye.